I dressed up really nice for this video and I was going to shoot it and then the sun came out and my face was a complete blur and the angle I was going to sit. So I decided that we are going to be on the floor today. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, today I'm going to talk about my influences that have enabled me to write this series that has been such a labor of love. And the reason I'm so dressed up is because the launch is coming. Forbidden Road is out in two weeks and we have the free books now. Black Emerald for subscribers, Forgotten Magic on all retailers free for everyone and a special Evans Witches Escape Room also for subscribers. So go to evanswitches.com and you can get them there. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the journey that started when I was like seven or eight. I watched Princess Bride for the first time and I had the hots for Wesley. I thought he was such an amazing guy. I mean, he was a pirate and he was also a really geeky kind of farm boy. And he was just all goody good and I just thought, wow, that the whole like kidnapping the person that you were actually meant to be with is such a twist on the kind of cliche and I thought that is brilliant. Um, and it was the main inspiration behind Forbidden Road. And in Forbidden Road we have the parallel timelines of Seth and Kim meeting as college students and then meeting again after they've traveled back in time to 500 AD. So this is pre-Camelot times and they just don't know each other. In both times there's a clash of personalities, they don't get along and the kidnapping in the night does happen but there's a huge twist there because Kim has uh, <laughs> done to karate belt and spectacular magic that she's unaware of and it's um it is a story of uh, a lot of courage she does it to save her father she goes willingly and um and he's doing it to save his king and in the present we also see that sweet kind of college romance and they meet and they get together and they they have to kind of overcome their differences um, because the love in Evans Witches is an epic love. It is guardian and charge. They're meant to be together. Magic unites them. Um, I, I do apologize for every name I would mispronounce today. Edward Kitsis and Adam Horvitz for the way they wrote Parallel Timelines in Once Upon a Time. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, I was actually introduced to Once Upon a Time by my best friend and dev editor when I was doing funny fairy tales and she said, oh, you know, you should watch this. This is kind of reminding me of that. I'm like, what is it? And it was brilliant. And of course, I absolutely adored Rumpel. I really liked how the, the timelines happen and then split and then come back together. Right, Laura Donnelly for creating an outstanding portrayal of Jenny in Outlander. I loved her dramatic temper and humor and she inspired Jane Omondi in Forbidden Road. She is Kim's best friend. Um, she's the daughter of an emigrant from Kenya and her dream is to become an English professor. She's very ambitious and she's a, she's a real role model. Wikipedia for Fergus Moore of Dalariada. I loved him. It's great material. He's real. He was the king of Dalariada, which is a very large kingdom, uh, mainly encompassing Northern Ireland and Scotland of today. and. Uh, a lot of uh, the leaders of Scotland since have claimed lineage to him. He was absolutely notorious. I write about him in the uh, in the forward to Forbidden Road. I needed to base my stories in reality as much as I could and in legend that is known, which is the Arthurian legends. Uh, Stephanie Mayer. I really liked how clear and um, moving her style of writing is. I didn't like it at first. I was used to reading classics and I thought, wow, like it flows too much, but you can't flow too much. I quite liked the main character's point of view. I thought that um, it's very different than the movies. She is so mature and so very um, responsible and she takes a lot on her. She's a very strong character actually. J.R.R. Tolkien for the journey of self-discovery in The Hobbit. When you write a character and you want to show their journey, you start somewhere really small and, and convenient. And I did that more in Blue Diamond, but I also did it here 
where you go towards the adventure, you go towards the big things. I try to always keep it going towards magic. So we start with small spells and we always go into bigger and bigger, um, eventually sometimes epic battles, it depends if um, on the story. Uh, the short story of Aragorn and Arwen, which were my basis for Ban and Vivian, so we see them in the next two books, Merlin's Creed and Secrets of Camelot. And I loved Vivian and Bam so much that I wrote their own story there. I really, really, really loved writing her. Lucy Montgomery for Anne of Green Gables' mention of Tennyson's Elaine. So this was the first time I discovered Arthurian legends. Elaine the Fair, uh, it's a poem of the death of Lancelot's mistress who died for love. Um, because he loved Guinevere and I did a big twist with Elaine's character. Um, I, in Secrets of Camelot, she and Guinevere are related and Elaine is um, kind of based on Comedia de Larte's um, Columbina character who's the smart one. Elaine has political talent, she understands how courts work. She's the glue sometimes. Alfred Lord Tennyson for creating an absolutely absurd King Arthur and it's public domain, so I actually took a couple of quotes there because um, what I wanted with Arthur's character is to create that depth of someone who is, on one hand, very idealistic and wants a better world, and on the other hand, on a personal level, can be quite difficult. Alia Stav for Knights of the Round Table, where I learned all about Camelot. So obviously I did not stop with Tennyson. I was so inspired. I really was looking for um, the mythology behind it. And there's so much that is connected, by the way, to Tolkien's world. Um, if you read enough of those, you would start seeing certain similarities. Lauren Cameron, David Hosselton, and William Nicholson for introducing the legend of Maligan to the world in the movie First Night with Sean Connery, Richard Gere, and Julia Ormond. When I started writing um, from Guinevere's perspective in Secrets of Camelot, I needed a story that was hers. Unfortunately, most of the stories of Arthurian legends are about the men and the knights, and I needed a woman, and I was just mesmerized. And I thought, wow, this is really great, and I went and I read the original, and I went and I looked for um, how to incorporate that into the world of the Evans witches. So, um, he becomes a terrible mage and he has awful powers and uh, the, the rescue is something a lot more epic. Um, Vivian Crowley for the book Wicca, where I learned about the maiden, the mother, the crone and for your amazing life's work. So I wanted to incorporate um, the idea from the Wicca religion, which has inspired me a lot in life, that a woman's adult life has three phases to it the maiden or the virgin, which is not physically a virgin, she's a virgin in her heart, so she does not commit. She is the princess, and she's looking for princes. Then comes the mother, she's the full woman now. Um, she's pregnant, she is a bearer of children of life. In our society, we've kind of looked a bit away from, we like everything to be very, very young and bright and new. Or as the maturity, the fullness, the, the full moon, it's the triple moon, because the goddess has the, the three phases of the moon. Then we also look away from the crone, the wise woman, the older woman, the most feminine, because she's no longer about the power of the mother or the beauty of the maiden. What is left is the true femininity and therefore the most feminine, the secret, the mystery, and the wisdom of women. In Secrets of Camelot, I don't just split Guinevere's life into these three phases, but also um, when you read it, you'll see the uh, closest character to Guinevere also portrays this. The legend of Gwynepnad and the marriage of Sir Gawain. Gwynepnad, I was looking for a little bit of a mischievous, slightly dark, bit notorious fairy, and I found him, and he is in Merlin's Creed, so Kim gets to meet him there. And Marriage of Sarah Gowan, I, I wanted to have something that's a bit more humorous. Um, Sarah Gowan <laughs> is the Don John of Secrets of Camelot. He is ugly and weird and everyone just like loves and women can't get enough of him. And I, I gotta say, I have met men like that in my life. 
I once met someone who was really badly injured and when he walked he was like a little bit disfigured but he had a sense of humor oh my goodness did he have the like bright brains and after knowing him for about a week you couldn't see it like you thought he was just like very attractive and I have learned something amazing from people like that because we are told <laughs> we are being fed that you have to look a certain way and be a certain way to be attractive and in truth it's somewhere inside you Robert Louis Stevenson for teaching me how to write villains and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and for the unbelievable dialogue between Jim Hawkins and Long John Silver at the end of Treasure Island, which inspired the scene where Julie stands up to Edward Davis. Um, I just love that scene. This is where Jim becomes a man. So he stands up to Long John Silver and says, you, you treat me like a little boy. But guess what? All those bad things that happened to you, that was me. And if you want me to save you from the gallows, you gotta play along. And that is brilliant. And Julie's story in Blue Diamond is a story of, again, coming from a small place, but also from, she suffers from PTSD, she's got a trauma, and she needs to step up and let go of that simple, comfortable life and step up and, and take charge and go against Edward. The dragons. <laughs> um, so I needed something humorous. You meet Leonard for the first time in Forbidden Road. Um, and he and Kim have this kind of funny dialogue. Uh, but um, historically, I actually wrote Blue Diamond first and then decided to do the Star Wars thing and make it number four and then write Forbidden Road. And so I already had Leonard. And I, when I read We Free Men by Terry Pratchett, I really loved the Knack McFiegel. So I even like put the Kirvin's Last as a kind of tribute in there. I think that you need to have humor and it's really good to have kind of eccentric characters that make a story a lot more colorful and less shiny. Um, right, so now we get to Mark. Uh, we meet Mark and Julie in Forbidden Road and Merlin's Greed as Kim's parents. But we also have the young Mark and Julie in the second trilogy. And I needed to write a character that would show one of the most uh, important aspects of the series, which is that power corrupts. So I created the epic. Okay, he's got everything. Young, hotshot, tech, billionaire, good looking. What happens if you add more to this? You've already got everything. What happens if you get magic? And embedded into the rules of this world is that if you're not born to magic as a mortal, it would corrupt you, it would take you beyond the limitations of what you can handle, which is why it's forbidden. And so, William Shakespeare, for the mystery that is Romeo, how on earth are we still in love with the male character who killed his wife's cousin, who was like a brother to her, and then killed her fiancé too? Um, yeah, Romeo doesn't make sense, and for some reason we're so in love with him. And I thought, well, what, what do you do to justify a character's motives to that extent that we would still love someone who's done such terrible things. Um, right, since we mentioned an ultra successful male character, thank you, Yale James, um, that if added one more <laughs> area of perfection would be the classic opportunity to break into tragedy. And boy, do I love writing villains. Meredith Wilde for writing the best ever breakup plotline in Hardcrest, inspired, I mapped it out and did my own thing as usual <laughs> in Dragonfire, and I wish someone wrote a full fanfic. Greek mythology, so, in uh, Mark's Journey of Darkness, I have a lot of Charon and the River Styx and Erebus, which is the darkness that gets into Mark. I wanted to base my writing as thoroughly as I could on legends and on myths and on things that already exist and kind of bring new light within it and humor. Douglas Adams, thank you for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Some of the side characters, Pierce Anthony, for building a character that struggles without active powers in a magical world in A Spell for Chameleon. I really love that book um, and it inspired Harley. I already knew that I was going to write a character like that. Harley is Kim's brother. We see him briefly in Forbidden Road, Merlin's Creed. Um, he has a huge role to play as someone who is a spectator. He sees the world a bit differently because he's the one who's not like spectacularly magical. Jane Austen, for the many times I laughed through six amazing novels and for the epic tension between Darcy and Elizabeth, 
So that really helped, <laughs> both with Kim and Seth and with Julie and Mark. Um, so Julie and Mark, they meet as sweethearts, but then, as I said, there's a journey of darkness. And Kim and Seth do not meet as sweethearts at all. <laughs> they don't get along, they got a lot of problems. Um, and inspired by this, I also wrote Darcy's Spell, which would come out much later this year, along with Blue Diamond. And it's a short story. I'm not exactly sure how I will release it, because uh, I've I'm kind of learning a little bit on how to release the short stories along with other things, but you will get it then. We're done. <laughs> so yeah, what started at the age of seven or eight has inspired a series of six books with one plot line that goes back into the beginning from the end, and all the books are interlinked, and Forbidden Road has two main timelines that are in parallel and one secret parallel timeline of the parents that eventually we see more of in the second trilogy. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got to learn a little bit about <laughs> what stood behind um, the writing of the Evans Witches. Uh, do go to the website and get your free books and your escape room and I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the launch.